Asus ROG Delta SART unusual gaming headset. It's really comfortable and it glows as a lot of other headphones of its own kind, but that one connects via Type-C and has its own audio hardware inside. Sounds intriguing, isn't it? I'll start with a set of components, for there's something to see. First goes USB-A adapter, which is a meter-long extension cable that immediately answers the question. But what do you do if no Type-C in my PC? There are also a good removable microphone with a nice flexibility and a pair of fabric ear cushions in case the stock one made of synthetic leathers bother you a lot. They are easy to take off, but gosh, I will destroy the person who will do it and then ask me to pull them on again. <clears throat> Did I make myself clear? The headset is mainly made of plastic, the metal can be seen only on a sliding headband part. In general, the assembly is on a high level, we haven't noticed any squeaks at all, although hinges have a bit of a play, they do not make any strange noises and still have a smooth ride, despite the fact that other journalists obviously scoffed at these headphones before me. On the ear cups we see RGB backlight that can be turned on and off right on the headphones. Near the slider there is a volume control wheel which is actually not really spinning. It is not broken and I am in my mind. Asus just set a well-known logic into a different kind of a switch. To make sound lower you must turn it a third down, louder, respectively up. After any of these actions the wheel returns to its original position. In practice this is much more convenient than traditional way with a potentiometer or an encoder as in modern players. And now. Now, finally, let's open the notes of Audio Psychopath. In front of us are over-ear headphones with half-closed acoustic design. From the inside, there is DAC and a part-time amplifier ESS Sabre 9218, also known as Quad DAC, which is a popular component in many LG smartphones. The sound is emitted by 50mm speakers. The headphone impedance is 32 ohm. The frequency range is 20Hz to 40kHz. Signal-to-noise ratio is 127 dB. You might ask a logical question, why does the wired headset has a built-in Sabre chip? The answer is even more logical, not every PC and laptop has normal sound card, so basically our headphones snap and easily compensate the possible drawback. The sound in headphones didn't surprise me to be honest. Knowing the specs, I was waiting for a dried sound with some aggressive treble and dynamic solutions in the face of V-shaped frequency response. In principle, we've got something like this. Despite the advanced hardware, Rock Delta cannot fulfill the audio file's need because the output is relatively futile. What's nice is the excellent virtual positioning of the sound source and the manufacturer's attempt to escape the pop routine by cutting high frequencies and implying a wide humming bass. The flow of sound in total is dense and punchy, and if sometimes you may want to hear more bass, as for their quality I have no complaints. The middle is a bit tight, but it plays out well, the headphones do not mumble and mid-range is quite clear. No one decided to reduce treble, because of it the music with an abundance of bad processing through these headphones is not worth listening to. On the other hand, high frequencies in games and movies are often fiercely smooth on audio track level, therefore when using a headset for its intended purpose you should not feel any cranks. A distinctive feature of any gaming headset should be the highest level of comfort, and Asus designers apparently agree with this. Here's what our headphone guy told me, I quote, At first, it seemed to me that these headphones were too big for my head, they were too loose. But over time, I realized that this was done on purpose, because even after hours of video editing without a single break, I didn't feel any discomfort. There was a slightly noticeable pressure of ear cushions on head temples, but it didn't cause a headache. And besides, we all have our own shape of skull, so in your case, feelings may be different. I personally was rather satisfied with the ergonomics of our reviewed hero." End quote. Despite the fact that it is a semi-closed solution, there is no perfect soundproofing as for the market of over-ear headphones. Using Rock Delta on the street I would not call a good idea, overall it was designed for home usage. Thanks to the Type-C port, the headset can be connected to almost anything, from modern PCs and laptops to tablets and smartphones, where micro-USB becomes less common year by year. On the one hand, the last option pleases, but on the other, it's a risky business. For example, playing music through Galaxy S9 Plus discharges the phone really quickly, I literally saw the percentage going down minute by minute. With Pocophone F1 there are no such problem. In short, the amount of discharge depends primarily on your tablet or smartphone. Headphone backlight is active when connected to any device, but it can only be configured on Windows-based machines with Aura support, which are, in short, only Asus gaming devices. The app is really simple, but in terms of personalization helps a lot. Summarizing the stuff, Rock Delta doesn't try to whip expensive over-ear headsets and doesn't aim to ranks of audiophile headphones. But in its class, it is perhaps the only interesting solution that offers something other than catchy design and backlight. 
Headset turned out to be very cozy. It has its own brains, which means doesn't rely fully on possibilities of sound cards that are often far from ideal. And unlike many gaming smartphones, there is no booming bass, but everything else instead of it. Would I give more than 200 bucks for Rock Delta? I think yes, in the end, this is not the most expensive gaming headset, and yet, obviously not the worst. We will place the links to this guy in the description box below. If you like this video, hit the like button and also subscribe and ring the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!